Good morning students, this is Mr. Buscherini and for today's lesson we're going to talk about scientific notation. Now, uh, scientific notation is by no means a new topic for most of you. So, uh, in this video more than in any other video you're going to see with me, I really encourage you if in any point you see things you've been already through, just fast forward to the next slide, okay? Because I'm going to take a very, very easy approach to the topic. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to transform numbers into scientific notation. And of course, since we're talking about this strange term, no, scientific notation, the two questions that I need to answer before we move on. So, what is scientific notation, but most importantly, why it's useful in physics, and actually it's useful in all sciences, but I will take a, put a more uh, physics spin to the topic. And I will start with the last question. So, why we're using uh, scientific notation in physics? And the main reason is that physics is a very wide uh, branch of science and uh, a physicist can deal in its uh, career with numbers which are enormously large and incredibly small. And just to give you some very, very easy examples, uh, first of all, our Milky Way, of course, this is not a picture of a Milky Way. We are inside the Milky Way galaxy. We can't take a picture of it. But let's imagine this is a Milky Way. And I want to, to say, okay, how wide it is? What is the diameter of a Milky Way? And here I'm giving you an approximate number. But as you can see here, it's an astounding number of kilometers. So just to give you an idea, these are thousands of kilometers. These are millions of kilometers, billions thousands of billions, which I think are trillions, and so on and so forth. So it's a really high amount of kilometers. And so now, for now, we, we, we saw numbers which are really large. You know, we, we dwelt in the domain of astronomy, astrophysics, and cosmology. But if we go in the domain of what we call subnuclear physics, or uh, more familiar particle physics, well, we have things like the electron. Here is our friend the electron. We're trying to measure its mass. Well, the mass of the electron is a very, very small number. And if you want to give its value in kilograms, what you will see is zero dot. And then you have a, a huge amount of zero. You have 30 zeros. And then you have 9109. There's actually more digits here, but I decided to round it up. And I hope at this point it's really clear for you that using the, these numbers in what we call the full form. So this is the full form of the form of a mass of an electron. is very impractical. Every time you have to write these numbers, you have to write all these zeros, which are mostly useless. And let's, let alone imagine when you have to do operations with them. So now we see the reason behind using a different way of writing these numbers. And again, as we did in the previous video about prefixes, what is important here is to use the powers of 10. You can use the powers of 10. And again, if it's something which is extremely familiar with you, you know this very well, just don't you worry, just fast forward to the next slide. For those of you who stayed, let's see how we can write the powers of 10 in a shorter way. Let's imagine 10. Okay, 10 is 10 to the power of 1, but let's go to 100. 100 is nothing else but 10 times 10. A number times itself is that number to the power of 2. So here we are. 100 is 10 to the power of 2. In a similar fashion, we can say that 1000, which is 10 times 10 times 3. And this number, this is 1 million. And this is 10. To, and you can say, okay, I count the number of zeros. And actually, what you should be doing is counting how many times you move a decimal point. The decimal point is here. You don't see it. But here it's the division between integers and decimals. And how many times you have to move it to reach your digit 1. And this is especially important once you go to numbers which are smaller than 1. So numbers which are um, the, uh, the negative powers of 10, starting with 0 0.1. 
0.1 can be written as 1 divided by 10, which is 10 to the power of 1. But when you have it in the um, lower part of a fraction, that means this has a negative power. So we can rewrite this as 10 to the power of minus 1. In a similar fashion, we can say that 0.01, which is the same as 1 over 100. This is also why we call this 100th. This was 1 tenth. So 100 is 10 to the power of minus 2. And moving forward, 0.001 is 1,000. 1 over 1,000. It's 10 to the power of minus 3. 0.00, there are five zeros here. It's 1 millionth because I'm moving the decimal point from here to here. Six places is 10 to the power of minus 6. So now we get to the last stage to, get, to see how we can represent a number in scientific notation. Because in the previous slide you saw, okay, we had powers 10, but most numbers you're going to deal with are not powers of 10. And I'm going to make a, two very simple ex, um, examples here. Let's start with this one, 300. Now, 300 can be written as 3 times 100. And now, if you remember what we saw in the previous slide, 100 can be written as 10 to the power of 2. So 300 can be written as 3 times 10 to the power of 2. And this is a, a shorter way to represent this number using the powers of 10. In a similar fashion, we can say that 0 0.003, which is 3 thousandth, 3 over 1,000, can be written as 3 times 10 to the power of minus 3. Okay, now we're ready to transform, um, and especially I, I would really like to use the, the two numbers we saw at the beginning of this video, the diameter of a Milky Way galaxy and the mass of electrons. So we're going to see how to transform them into scientific notation. So as you can see, I rewrote here the size, the diameter of a Milky Way galaxy in kilometers. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to transform this in a number multiplied a power of, of, of 10. But how do I do this? Now, the first rule you have to remember, a number in scientific notation starts with a digit a known decimal which has to be less than 10, so I should have said a number, not a digit, less than 10 and more than 0. So I will put my decimal point here, where than up, just after the 9. So I will write this as 9.46 times. So what is the power of 10 I'm going to select? I don't, a very common mistake here will be just to count the zeros. And if you can count them, I already put them in groups of three. I have five groups of three, so you should have 10 to the power of 15, but that is wrong. You have to count how many times you move a decimal point. You moved it 15 points until you're here, then you have to move it two more times. So the correct power is 10 to the power of 17. And here you are, the diameter of a Milky Way galaxy written beautifully in scientific notation. So how about a number which is really small, like the mass of an electron? We're going to work in exactly the same fashion. So here you have the mass of an electron written, this is what we call the full form, okay, as opposed to the scientific notation standard form. Okay, so what I'm going to, look, I'm going to go down and find the first known zero digit, that's a 9 here, so I'm going to write 9, and then everything else comes after the decimal point, so 109 will be after the decimal point, so 9.109 times 10, and now I have a negative power because I'm going backwards from a decimal point, and I'm going to count, come with me, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, and one more step to get here, 31. So, the mass of electron written in scientific notation is 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And of course, if you take um, any physics textbook, if you look online, you will never find, well, 
it's very unlikely that you will find these two physical quantities written this way for reasons that I hope now are pretty obvious. You will find them, on the other hand, written this way, in the case of a diameter of a Milky Way galaxy, or this way, in the case of a mass of an electron. And to complete this video about scientific notation, I really want to show you a very common mistake that most students do, especially the first time they try to transform a number from what we call the full form into the standard form or scientific notation. And I have this example here, a very random number. As you can see, it doesn't even have a unit, but I don't care at this point. So we have 370,000. Okay, and I want to see what is the correct way to write this as scientific notation. And what you see here, there are three ways down here in which I wrote the same number. And I want to point out that all three of them are exact number. They're not wrong, and they're not a different number. They're all the same number, all using uh, the powers of 10, but only one of these three is scientific notation. And as you can see, the first one I marked it, this is not scientific notation, this is not scientific notation, and this is scientific notation. I really want you to try to pause the video right now and think, okay, why these two are not considered scientific notation? And as most of you would have guessed by now, the reason is especially, not especially just in the number which is before the decimal point. Because here we have 34, and as I told you, the number here has to be less than 10. Basically, you only have to need one digit. Here we have two digits. So this is definitely not scientific notation. And this one, well, this one has one digit before the decimal point, but unfortunately that digit is zero. That digit has to be at least one. So the only way... And in class we're going to see many more examples, but most importantly we're going to see also how to do the reverse. So if you have a number in scientific notation, how to change it into full form, and even more difficult, how to combine, and with combining means multiply, dividing, etc., numbers which are written in scientific notation. But for today, this is all. Goodbye from Mr. Buscarine.